I am on a mission to declutter my house and we are going to get started in the scrapbook room, which I call the scrap room for short. I have been scrapbooking for 30 plus years. A little bit surprising to realize that. <laughs> but I started by pasting my photos into construction paper albums with rubber cement. Just a note, that is not an archival safe way to do it. <laughs> so I've learned better since then. And I have bought several things in the many, many years since then. I stopped scrapbooking early in 2023 because I just couldn't access all of my supplies and there was really no place for the dogs either. But we're changing that today. For the most part, I am stationed at this table throughout the video with a couple of exceptions. And this video starts with me finding a bag of Cupid's beloved treats. And yeah, I did have a little cry fest. Started off the day with tears, but it did go up from here. So that's something. This video is a collaboration with Bonnie from A Beautiful Mess, who came and helped me with this room. I've done other collaborations with Bonnie, so check out that playlist. She's a superhero and a whirlwind. I can't believe how much work she gets done in one day. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of energy. And I also collaborated with Allie from Real Life with Allie. And I will link to both of their channels in the description below. If their videos about it are posted, I will link to the video itself. If not, I'll link to the channel. Please go and check them both out. They are terrific women and I'm sure you'll love their channels. If you've watched my channel, it probably won't surprise you that I am a bit of a messy scrapbooker. My workspace is always piled up. Admittedly, it's not always this bad. This is the result of, yes, piled up messy scrapbooking. <laughs> and also bringing stuff in here from other rooms that need to go in here, but can't be put away because it's kind of a big mess. I have talked before about my little pockets of organization, and you do see some of those here. The problem is a lot of these pockets can't be reached. And there's another problem that we'll talk about a bit later in this video. I came across this envelope that reads, when you're ready. Some people scrapbook about the good things in their life. I do scrapbook about those things, but I also scrapbook about the sad things, the crappy things. And so that envelope contains pictures that I may not necessarily want to scrapbook right away. This envelope contains some pictures from my dad's last days and when I get my mom's final days and Cupid's final days, those photos developed, those will go in there too. It's just a way to keep those kinds of photos safe without having to open up the envelope and see what's inside. And I just, I know automatically what is in there. The first thing that Bonnie and I do when we see each other is catch up. <laughs> I feel like I was talking her ear off this first day. <laughs> I don't know if she feels the same, but I definitely was like, la, 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 la. <laughs> it's always really good to see her and get her thoughts and just chat, see how she's doing. Meanwhile, I did make some headway. <laughs> I did get some stuff done in here. Slowly but surely, I am going through and seeing what all is here. It's the part of decluttering that I really like where you're like, 
Oh, I didn't remember I had this, and this is so cool. <laughs> I did a fair amount of that, and I have to admit that there's a flip side to that too, wherein you find stuff and you're like, why did I even buy that? And I definitely had many of those moments too. <laughs> But we set up a recycling bin for that, and that definitely got filled up pretty quickly. I found some memorabilia in these piles, some pages that I started but didn't finish, and I do need to finish those. I found a picture of Chris Evans's chest <laughs> from the first Captain America movie. Someone decorated my workspace with that for my birthday one year. <laughs> there were lots of photos on the desk. It's going to be great to scrapbook these memories. I just am so excited to dive into them and scrapbooking again. It's been too long. I've done a few projects for you guys actually on camera. <laughs> I will have that playlist for you. I'm ready to have a good space that is open and clear and usable. My tabletop always gets pretty bad. Even when I go and crop elsewhere, a crop is what scrapbookers call like an event where you go to scrapbook together. It doesn't get this bad, of course, in the space of a couple hours, but give me a few days and I will still mess things up. I came across this die cut and decided to slow down the video. You are capable of amazing things. I love that message and I'm gonna carry it with me through the rest of this project. In fact, I think I'm gonna put that in our peeling away the clutter scrapbook because that is a great message for all of us. Now, a little note about this room. The scrapbook room is the reason that I chose this house. When I went looking to buy a new house several years ago, I wanted to have one level living, so minimal stairs, a few I could manage, but I couldn't go up and down several levels like I was doing at the previous house. And I wanted to have space for a really big scrap room. I'll never forget when I came here with one of my sisters and my realtor and we were just talking. I was like, I love so much about this place. Like there's, I love the location. I love the one level. I love, that's a huge bonus for me. But I was standing in this room and thinking, okay, this is probably the master bedroom because it's the biggest room in the house. And I was saying, oh, I just wish there were a bigger room for scrapbooking. And my realtor said, why don't you set up your scrapbook room in this one and put your bedroom in the other space. And it was like a light bulb went off. I was like, oh, yes. So I agreed on this house, got myself in, and then the housing market just exploded. So I was so grateful that I got it when I did. That is the story of how I ended up in this house. Now, right there, I just found a little chalkboard and I might use that for that list that I was talking about, my task list to help me to keep on keeping on as far as maintenance goes. I slowed down the footage a bit so that you could <laughs> better see what happens in this little segment here. Keep your eye on the trash bag next to me. I have to admit I was a little at a loss with how to start this, how to tackle this. I was really glad that Bonnie and Allie were there <laughs> tackling some of the bigger things because I was like, should I be micro organizing at this point? What should I be doing here? And I just basically started by putting things in keep or not keep. <laughs> 
I did try to divide a little bit with that as well. Like I would put stamp sets in a certain place. I had a bag for embellishments. I was also putting stuff in the trash. And then the trash started moving. And I was like, what's happening here? And then it became clear what was happening here, which was Colt was trying to get into the trash. <laughs> that silly guy. <laughs> he was a crazy boy throughout this whole thing. I know Bonnie got some great footage of his antics. So I finally went ahead and gave him a little bit of love. We are finally at the point where he will let me pick him up. He is not super fond of it, but at the same time, like he was pretty content to stay on my lap for a bit. He did start getting a little bit squeamish, like, okay, okay, enough of that. <laughs> and that is when I let him go. But it was nice to have this little moment of dog therapy and some bonding. If you're wondering where Clay was, he spent a lot of time sleeping on this puffy pillow underneath the desk. My dogs have never actually been fond of this room. I think it's because this is a converted garage. The temperatures are definitely more extreme. <laughs> It is warmer in the summer and hotter, or no, cooler in the winter. So I do have a fireplace and a fan, <laughs> depending on what time of year it is, to help th make things more comfortable. The dogs have beds in here but they are underneath the desk right now. When the room is finished, I would like to find better places for the fireplace and fan and the beds. We'll see if we can figure out something better so that they can be comfortable and cozy in here. I've also secretly wondered if there is like a vortex to hell underneath this room that maybe the dogs are sensing, but I think that's because I watch too many horror movies. <laughs> the stuff I create in here is far too beautiful for that to be true. Okay, let's talk about my first attempt to clean this room. I moved into this house with a zillion boxes, maybe a zillion and one. And I started thinking, I really want to get professional organizers in here. So I contacted some locals, showed them some photos because I wanted them to know exactly what they were getting into. I didn't want them to show up expecting a more traditional <laughs> traditional organizing project they said that they were good to go and they came so it was three organizers me and they came for i can't remember if it was two or three days they came i sorted through stuff we all organized and by the end it wasn't done. That was with four of us all together. But I had reached the end of my budget and I thought I will continue on. A year or so later I had money to do more and I thought, you know what? I think I'd really like to do the living room. So <laughs> We did the living room and we finished the living room. But the problem was there was a lot of stuff in there that I wanted to keep. And I didn't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> so where did it end up? 
it came into the scrapbook room because that was where I had room to put it. There is a lot of stuff that is still organized in the scrapbook room, as in like different bins of stuff. But as you can imagine, it undid a lot of the work, at least on the floor space. And then in the end, I ended up recluttering the living room and the scrapbook room got more cluttered again. So here we are. <laughs> Things don't always work out the first time that you try them. And I'm also ready to let go of more now than I was then. It's now about five years since I did that previous attempt with the organizers. And anything is going to be better than what I have now. <laughs> Honestly, it, it really is. I have piled up stuff so much that I can barely get into my desk. So having space around the desk is going to be a delight. Having a cleaned off workspace is going to be a delight. Anything else that gets done is going to be a bonus because really that's all I want right now. Space for me, space for the pups, space to create, and I'll be good. I'm sitting at my table and I did work on that, but I also chipped away at things that surrounded me because I had a lot surrounding me. There is all the stuff that you saw in the living room, boxes, <laughs> <laughs> package wrapping, water bottles, there's gotta be a water bottle. There were a lot of scrapbooking supplies on the floor. The table is not flush to the wall, it won't go all the way over to the wall. And so when I would have little avalanches on my table because of all the supplies I had, stuff would spill onto the floor. I'm not super mobile, so I had a difficult time getting to some of that. I need to take the advice that I have gotten from a few videos and use one of those long handled grabbers <laughs> so that when things fall down, I can get them again. And in fact, I do have one of those somewhere. <laughs> Unless I gave it back to my parents, which I might have done. So we'll find out, I guess, at some point if I come across one or, you know, maybe maybe there's an extra one there that I can take. Not that we want avalanches to continue, but, you know, stuff does fall on the floor and it's better if I can actually pick it up instead of having to wait for someone to come along and do it for me. I'm also finding a few things that need to go to other rooms, so those are being put over in this little area here. The pile is pretty small now, but I will add to it as we go. This angle is really not the best. <laughs> Bonnie came there and helped me save <laughs> save a little light. Let's talk about how the room got this way. I've already explained the part about the organizers coming in and then bringing more stuff into the room, but what I haven't talked about are all of the scrapbooking supplies themselves. As I said earlier, I have been scrapbooking for 30 years. In that time, I have made several moves. And with each move, some supplies get lost, misplaced, buried, left in boxes. I like to have a good selection of items to choose from while I'm creating. And at the time, I would think, you know, I need some more supplies. I'm not sure where the rest is. And so I would buy more. 
scrapbooking experienced a huge surge of interest from like 2000 to 2004 or so. I was like a kid in a candy store with a ton of money. <laughs> I didn't have a ton of money, but you know, single with not a lot of expenses. I was just starting off in my adult journey. I guess I should call it my post-college adult journey. There were a lot of new companies coming out with scrapbooking supplies, and I definitely supported them very wholeheartedly. I did have spending limits, but I was really enthralled and entranced by all of the new stuff and yeah got sucked right into it i loved that time so much it was the golden era and there were message boards everywhere and all kinds of things about scrapbooking magazines it was great i was scrapbooking and then i would kind of get a little bit burned out so I would set it aside for a time and then I would get right back into it. Each time I got back into it I would think you know I need a few new supplies to start things out. It's always fun to play with new things and that has been a way that I have re-sparked my interest in scrapbooking and meanwhile old stuff would get more and more neglected. Don't get me wrong, I did use some of the old supplies. I would mix that older stuff in. There has been a movement for years to scrap your stash, which in this case does not mean toss your stash out. It means scrapbook your pages with your stash. But I wasn't getting paid to scrapbook, so I could never use up the stuff fast enough to balance the stuff that was coming in. Then there was a time from about 2015 on where I was part of a scrapbook kit. Okay, I need to start at the beginning there. <laughs> My first scrapbook kit was called Club Scrap and they had these great themed kits and they were really cool and they came in and every now and then I'd use them but they came every month and so they piled up and piled up and piled up. The only reason I stopped was because my credit card expired and when they said hey we need new credit card info I thought to myself, okay, um, before I start that up again, I really need to use the 20 plus kits that I already have. Then I got kits from a company called Topline Creations. Then I stopped having kits for a while until 2015 when I joined a kit called Felicity Jane Kit and another one called the Messy Box Kit. The messy box lasted for a couple of years and then it stopped offering. Felicity Jane stopped business probably a year or so ago. I think it was January of 2023. I definitely enjoyed their kits and would probably want to be getting their kits, but they closed and that is the end of the monthly kits but lots of supplies from all of those kits remain so that's lots of stuff i need to use up or let go as much as i want to support scrapbooking it's better for me not to subscribe when i started getting interested in scrapbooking again in 2015 and subscribed to a couple of kits I was really feeling low health-wise. I was in and out of the hospital for asthma issues. Those kits and scrapbooking with the supplies gave me something to look forward to. And that's something that I really needed at the time. Let's face it, having something to look forward to is still very much part of my mental health. 
I just need to find ways to do that that are not shopping related or kit related. Instead, I can look forward to activities or shopping from what I already have, which is plenty. I also know that in the latest move, there definitely are some boxes, probably several boxes of supplies that are still hanging out in <laughs> Mount Doom. That of course led to another shopping surge when I moved in here. One thing is absolutely clear though, I do not need to buy supplies ever again. Maybe I will need adhesive one day down the road, but even that I found a huge stash of. I am still working on just the table. You can see, I'm not sure if that's Bonnie or Allie in the background. <laughs> But they were there working very, very hard. I'm still piling up things that need to go in different rooms. Every room I have decluttered, I've needed to relocate items. That's just part of the deal. As I clear off more of this table space though, I will be able to sort through other things. They are, yep. There's Bonnie in the background right behind me. And they are just finding things and putting them in boxes and bins that I have. And then I need to go through them all. I really could have used a clone here, I'll be honest. Just for the sorting part, because that's what I had to do myself. But Bonnie is really better than a clone. <laughs> And I loved hearing her and Allie talk about, okay, well, how, what if we try this? Or let's do this. And I just loved hearing about it all. It was awesome. I can't even tell you how grateful I was to have their help because not everyone has that. Not everyone has a friend or two who can come over and help them work their way through tons and tons of stuff. Now, speaking of work, I worked for a few hours in the morning until lunch. And then after lunch, I would rest for a few hours. And then I would work for a few more hours till the, the last day. I was pretty much dragging on the last day. This is day two though, and I still had plenty of steam. And I was actually pretty proud of myself. I felt like I was able to work a bit longer than I had been in the kitchen or bathroom. So that made me happy. Maybe I'm building more stamina or maybe scrapbooking is just more interesting to me <laughs> than the kitchen. I don't know. Maybe a combination of both. Now, <laughs> as you can see, I'm bringing in more paper. I tend to line up paper against the legs of the table, and I don't know why. I don't know why I do this. Okay, a reason just occurred to me. <laughs> it's because when I get in the creative mode, I don't want to take the time to put anything away. And therefore, when I want to get something off the table and out of the way, I will set it down on one of the table legs on either side of me. Also, there were times when I would place an order and would think, well, I don't want to put this paper where the paper goes because the paper is actually another pocket of organization. But I would think I want to have a chance to use it before it falls into the great abyss known as my storage. <laughs> but then it often didn't make it to the storage and it would just sit in these rows on the floor and that isn't doing anybody any good either. This angle is pretty good for showing how my table is set up. Right here is some storage and it's got a few things in it. It 
has pens on the top. There are some rows that hold ink pads. There's also a couple rows for my adhesive refills. Unfortunately, I kind of feel like I have outgrown this storage. I actually bought a couple of different bins for the pens and they will turn up at some point. <laughs> I also feel like I can come up with a better idea for the adhesive refills and then maybe just use that entire storage for ink pads because they kind of spill over everywhere. I have a couple of lamps that use Ott light bulbs to help me with get as much natural lighting as possible even when the lighting isn't too natural. <laughs> In other words, at night. Underneath this stuff is my great trimmer. I love it to pieces, but because it's a flat surface, I also pile stuff on top of it. So yeah, that's kind of sad. And it's kind of big too, which is fine. But when I want to, you know, go out to the kitchen or whatever to scrapbook, then I need to take something a little bit more portable. And really, the only reason I'm scrapbooking in the kitchen is because I can't scrapbook in here. <laughs> but I do need that portable trimmer when I go to crops with friends. This is covered up a bit, but it's a spinning organizer and I keep all kinds of things in it like all my scissors, some different glitter pens, what else do I keep in there? My adhesive runners, some glue. It's handy to have it right by my side. Now in front of me, I've got a little <laughs> hanging. It's like a little coat rack, only instead of coats, I hang rolls of tape or glue dots on it. I've got my lovely aqua bin, which is supposed to hold miscellaneous die cuts. Sometimes when I am scrapbooking, die cuts don't get put back in the, the envelope that they're supposed to be in. And when that happens, I just throw them in here. I have too many for that though. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to get them back where they need to be, I guess. Here is some storage of acetate pieces, some acrylic pieces, some sequins, <laughs> some die cuts from Felicity Jane. I keep those here. Just sort of one-off unusual embellishments that I don't have a big grouping of. They just are tucked into the different compartments here. Then I have the big washi tape tower. Washi tape is a whole story of its own. Whew. We may get to that story, but let's move on for now and talk about what I'm doing here. And that is going through piles and piles and piles of paper. So once I sort of cleared away the main space on the desk, I started going through the boxes that Bonnie and Allie prepared so I could go through the stuff and then they could organize after I figured out what I was keeping and what I was not. Now, I started out scrapbooking a long time ago, as I said, and I have a ton of cardstock. And cardstock is like the thicker, heavier paper. It's one color, and I don't really use it. I used to use it more, and then later on, I would use it to just be a more solid backing of my pattern paper, but now I just don't even use it really for that. I kept the white cardstock so that I can do paint and mist and other types of mixed media on it, but 99% of the other paper I just am letting go. Here's my little clay. <laughs> it's a clay siding. I was super happy to have him come visit me. <laughs> so I let go of a lot of the cardstock. 
I am letting go of paper as well. You can see a stack of paper to my left. That is the paper that I will be keeping and filing. I have a file folder system that works for me pretty well. I have a little filing system that I love and I got it at Target like at least 20 years ago, maybe more. I have another one that does the job <laughs> because I grew out of the first one, of course. I am going to have to go through all the paper that is currently in that storage system, but that's a problem for future me. It's tucked away. It's out of sight right now. So we are focusing on the stuff that is just spread out everywhere and not the stuff that is put in a rightful home. Let's talk a little about how I decided what to keep and what to let go. Basically, I would pick it up and if it was, yes, I love it, I would keep it. If it was, I'm not sure, then I would look at it and I would just ask myself questions. And I would often ask these out loud, like, am I gonna use you? No, I'm really not gonna use you. <laughs> so I would put that away in a donate bin. I would look at an item and think, okay, how long have I had this? And why haven't I used it before now? I try to be really honest with myself with this question. An obvious answer is, well, I didn't know I had it. And that was a legitimate reason in some cases, but I really would ask myself the question again, is that really why? Like, are you going to use it now? How do you feel about it now? Would you buy it again right now? This helped me let go of a lot of older stuff. And I tried to be kind of ruthless when it came to stamp sets because I've had a lot of stamp sets for a lot of years and I rarely stamp on my pages. So I would pour over each set and say, okay, how many of these am I really gonna use? How many of these images do I love? And woo, ribbon, here we go. <laughs> I remember going through and letting go of a bunch of ribbon when the I tried to organize this room for the first time with the organizers. And now there's still ribbon that I loved at the time and some of it I still love and some of it I'm like, no, I can let go of the whole thing. For those that I loved, many of them were on a roll and I'm not going to use the full roll. Like I love this ribbon, but I don't love it enough to go on like 90 projects. I set aside the rolls and at a future point, I cut off sections that I thought I really would lo logically and realistically use. And then I let the rest of the roll go for that big tangled mess. We just put it all in one bag. <laughs> so it's going to be an untangling project for me while I watch TV. <laughs> and Bonnie came and brought over these stamps and I have a whole system. But as I look at it, that system takes up a lot of space and I don't use very many of these. I use a few. Don't get me wrong. I use a few. I use a few that especially that are more of the sassy sayings <laughs> that have a little bit of snark with them. I also use a few of the date stamps. This angle gives you a better look at the tree of tapes. <laughs> And you can kind of see the surface of the large trimmer there too. While I am picking away at the stuff on the table, Allie and Bonnie are both just putting stuff into boxes so that I can sort through them. I forgot to mention that this box holds a large light that will go onto the table and might end up replacing the lamps or might just contribute to the light with the lamps. We'll see. This is sadly common for me and you see this really in most rooms of the house. 
I will buy something and then <laughs> it'll sit <laughs> in the box or the bag for a while until I finally am able to make space for it or I don't know. I don't know what it is. Sometimes buying has more of a dopamine hit than the actual opening. <laughs> kind of sad to think about. Even so though, it's important to think about because I definitely want to do things differently. I am now exploring a new box that has stuff in it. Well, when I say new, I mean they just handed it to me. <laughs> it wasn't unopened or anything. It has lots of things that were shoved into it. Some of this was probably just gathered from lots of different rooms. I don't even know. All sorts of stuff I found. There's a little cross stitch that I did many, 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 many years ago. I found some other memorabilia, some old pictures. The title to a car that I no longer own. <laughs> Yeah, I remember having to pay to get a new uh, replacement title when I sold that. Nice. Here are some additional scrapbooking things. So some stickers I let go of. I have a thing for sticker books. I love them to pieces, but I realized that some of those were kind of old and really had not been used. So I just need to let go. Needed to let go. Oh, and here we have part of my autograph collection. Have I mentioned my autograph collection before? Let's see. <laughs> it started after college and I wrote to a bunch of celebrities and would include a, an envelope with postage so they could send me back an autograph. And I got lots of autographs. It's not the biggest or best collection out there, but I had fun doing it and I would like to display it at some point. That'd be nice. I separated all of the autographs out so they can be held separately from everything else. And look, I found a photo frame from Target with the receipt. Do you think they'll let me return it? It's from 2001. Actually, I'm not going to even try. I'm just donating it. <laughs> it's really not my style. It was my style in 2001, but no more. More autographs. Now I'm finding like old school work. Now there's a bag of trash over here and a little someone keeps trying to get into it because it has a two year old <laughs> dog cookie in it. So yes, my little colt was trying his hardest to get in there. And I'm slowing down so you can witness some of his attempts. Enjoy. <laughs> I do not know how to tell you how determined this dog is. When he wants something, he puts his whole heart and his whole body into it. He's going to be a real good dog someday. <laughs> Right now, he still needs some training, so I mean, he's a really good dog, don't get me wrong, but his manners are a work in progress. Right now, I am trying to teach him not to paw at my face when he wants my attention. He used to paw at my feet, but I got uh, heavier shoes, and now he's like all switched to the face, so... At this rate, I may need a football helmet. I love them though, so we're working through all of it. There were a lot of non-scrapbooking things in this box. And 
a few that were actually related to scrapbooking. Now here's where I am doing that ribbon cutting. I have all of these rolls and I'm cutting enough for me to get some use and enjoyment out of those on future projects. And then I'm letting the rest of the rolls go. I was singing Elsa's epic refrain through a lot of my sorting <laughs> sessions. And look at these templates. My gosh, some of them are so old. And when I am setting them behind me like that, those are the ones that I am letting go. So I got rid of about half of those. That's pretty good. And here comes another box. There's a clay sighting. I had to keep that footage of my little cutie in the video. He was on the landing for a fair amount of time. As I've mentioned before, he doesn't really like this room. So he would watch from there. I guess he was taking a supervisory role, but he did come in a bit. And when he did, he would usually be on a puffy pillow. <laughs> under the desk under this table here i've got a fresh box that i'm going through lots of paper and the paper that is going next to me on the left is the paper i am keeping there's also a stack of paper scraps it is time to make some confessions <laughs> First of all, I have a paper problem. I love pattern paper and there are so many great papers out there, but I did let go of some. You can see when I'm shifting to the right and moving them there, I am putting them in the donate bin. So I was pretty pleased of myself for that. Here is my other confession. I made a mistake in how I approached this room. There is one me and me needed to be making sorting decisions from the very beginning. By starting out at the table, I felt a little bit like I was just going into standard crafting mode and I was just puttering, doing things, and really organizing or setting things aside on more of a micro level. I did do some sorting that needed to be done, yes, but I really feel like I should have tackled the table last and just started diving into boxes that were around. I should have just sat in my good old blue chair sorted through some boxes where they were or set up a little corner where I would just, they would put the boxes together and I would sort. I feel like that would have been a better use of my time and ultimately their time. But my brain's got problems when it comes to organizing. So I just, I didn't think that through. And looking back, I really wish I had. I feel like I became a bit of a bottleneck because there's only so much that they can do if they don't know if the stuff is staying or not. I can't go back in time and I'm just going to have to keep on pressing forward. But I just want to let you know now that we do not end up with a perfectly clean scrapbook room at the end of today's video. And that's pretty much the reason why. To anyone who is doing a big room or just any room, but is doing it with other people, I definitely recommend that you set up a sorting station where whoever needs to make the decisions can go through stuff and make those decisions while the others can easily address what is in the keep pile. That is my advice to you and also to future me because future me needs to do a lot more sorting in this room before it will really be done. 
And here are a bunch of old stickers from Club Scrap. Remember, as I reach to my right, kind of over my shoulder, that is what I am letting go. And I let go of several of those. They've been in there for a while and I haven't touched them. And this is where the germ of realization starts. It didn't fully hit me until day four, but it really did start here and we are in day three right now. But as I let go of items that I got in those club scrap kits, I started to realize that I'm letting go of items from like 10 or 15 years ago right now. And in another five years, I'll, am I going to let go of items from other kits? And then I was truly struck by the number of supplies that I really have. It was easy for me to get them before because I couldn't find my other stuff or I didn't know where it was. And maybe I wanted some new items to spark my creativity because that always helps too. Besides, scrapbooking supplies are not that big, right? It's not that significant to get some stickers or get an inch deep of pattern paper. I had all the excuses in the world to buy and I did scrapbook with them. I mean, I'm not going to say that I did absolutely nothing with them, but there are a lot of supplies that are truly untouched that I haven't used even part of it. Some stuff that I bought 10 years ago, I am happy to still use anyway, but there's a lot of other stuff that is no longer my style. When I, I think 10 years ago, I would scrapbook with stuff and I didn't care what era <laughs> it came from. But as time passed, I came to look at my supplies and think, oh, wow, that's really dated. And I just didn't have that same excitement about working with that. I need to get this room back into a usable place with supplies that I absolutely love and am excited to use and I need not buy anymore. <laughs> there is plenty in my stash that I'm still excited to work with. So I need to get busy, get going on this. Oh, and there's my little man, <laughs> little Colt. He's got a paintbrush there. <laughs> He was having the craziest adventures in this room while the rest of us were working ourselves to exhaustion. <laughs> oh, heavens. If I could even have a fourth of that boy's energy, I would be in such great shape. I cannot even tell you. He's going to be two next month in May. But I don't see him calming down anytime soon. <laughs> Huge shout out to you if you are still watching this video. It's been a long one. And there's not really a full-fledged before and after shot. But I hope you'll come back for the next segment next week. Where you will see where we ended up. There are a lot more realizations and sorting sessions to come. Another shout out to Bonnie from A Beautiful Mess and Allie from Real Life with Allie. Big thanks for helping me with this room. I absolutely could not have done it without you. This room was absolutely a team effort. Bonnie also went above and beyond. She took a bunch of my clothes home one day so that she could bring it back folded the next time she came. She also took stacks and stacks of my scrapbook pages so she could put them 
in chronological order for me to put into albums, which is going to be such a huge help. She also took paper home to sort paper into stacks by color. I, this woman, I just do not know where she came from except from heaven. She is absolutely heaven sent. I've got some sorting to do, so that's where we'll pick up next time. In the meantime, enjoy some doggy antics. I don't even. What are you doing? You trying to get to the doggy treats? Ah! Leave the papers alone, please. Oh dear, a minute ago he was chewing on this chair, which to admit was broken already, like he didn't break that spot. I've been wanting a new chair anyway, but <laughs> look, there's my baby, there's Clay. Follow his example of good behavior, my love. Oh, did you find a chew? You did. Good boy. Get cozy. All right. Where's Clay going? Are you following his bad example? <laughs> Come here, Clay, and get cozy. You want to get cozy? Hi. There's Minky and Clay, <laughs> of course. Don't mind his moles, he has been seen by the vet. You want to get cozy? Go get cozy, love. No, they're too busy. They gotta inspect this stuff. <laughs>